everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We have been talking to Jonathan Hammond and we are in part three of talking about his book, Shaman's Mind. So we've, we've covered the seven principles of Huna. We've talked about the Hawaiian cosmology and now we're talking about the three selves. So tell us a little bit about what this, the, this basic idea is of our three selves. Yeah, so this is a, this is a big topic, but I'll, 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 I'll try to hit them. You'll, you'll, you'll understand them in some way. So a high self connected to God, mm -hmm. easiest way to understand that is when you feel inspired, mm -hmm. when you feel that thing that wants you to reach toward potential, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's high self, you know, okay. anything that's bringing you toward growth and creation. And, and is that cool, Lono or Kane? That's Kane. 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 That's, that's, that's one word for it. Another word is Almakua, the, the, um, uh, uh, the high self, the, the, the soul self. All right. So that's one. And, and the Hawaiians believe that essentially, if you just go there, don't worry about the big God. The big God, let the big God, the big God's too big for us to understand. Right. Just, just deal with the high self. That's the, right. um, They have plenty of words for the big God, but they don't really deal with it. They deal with the high self. And the easiest way to understand it is when you're inspired, you're in it. Mm. You know. Uh, then the conscious mind, that's just the part of you that makes choices and that, and, and that focuses. And while that may seem like, oh, well, the conscious mind, I'm very familiar with that. That is the leader. Is that the ku or the lono? That, that, that's lono. That's okay. lono. So we have Kane, high self, but lono is our, that's our inner CEO. That's the one that makes choices based on how it's inspired. That's the one that did that. That's the one that utilizes these seven principles. That's the one that that tends to our thoughts. That's the one that that uh, delegitimizes our doubt. It's a very, very important aspect. And what I find with most people is that that the conscious mind is really underutilized, you know, mm. because it's what because we might be inspired to do something, but then the conscious mind is the one that that creates the beliefs or tends to the beliefs that we hold that are antithetical to what we're going, what we're inspired to. And those misbeliefs are held in the coup, the unconscious body mind. Oh. So the easiest way to understand this is that the, the, uh, the, 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 third, the third part of us, the body, is the aspect of us that has memorized two things. Genetically, it's memorized how to keep us alive. And it's also uh, it also it operates on genetic memory and learned memory and learned memory is where the problem lives mm -hmm. because we may have learned something about ourselves we're not good enough we don't look right uh, we'll never we're not money isn't right but my, my face doesn't look right i'm not right well whatever those things are that we learn usually as children those are held as as beliefs that are as deep and entrenched as the memorization of your heart beating. They mm. are, in, and, and the conscious mind is the one that says, uh-oh, if I'm gonna go there, if I'm gonna follow higher self, I have this belief in there that says, you're never going there. You don't have mm -hmm. a sense of self that will ever allow you to go there. Mm -hmm. And that's where, and that's what we have to heal. Mm. And the conscious mind is the one who makes the decision. There is this part of me that uh, that uh, that is is out of alignment with love. That is out of, uh, of alignment with with the divinity of my journey. And so uh, and so and, and when we get that part of us in alignment, when those three selves align, you know that which we do in Ho'oponopono. That's the point of that practice. The point of of Ho'oponopono, which is the, the the last chapter of my book, is that we are extending love mm -hmm. to this part of us that is hurt that is uh that is uh, conflicted that is stuck and this the part coup. of us, yeah, the coup, inside the coup inside the coup the coup does a lot of wonderful things too but it's yes. the stuff in the coup that we you know that we um uh that that is that we hold that are that is antithetical to our best interest and when we give love to these things that were born of unlove mm -hmm. We then get them to recalibrate themselves and think of themselves differently. And when we do that, we actually invite and then, then, then the high self says, we have some healing going on down here. We have someone who's moving toward their divinity and, and the high self, according to this cosmology, contacts the big love, God, and says, bring the healing. Mm, wow, interesting. All because the conscious mind made a choice to give love. 
to this part of us that's hurt. Right. It says, okay, there's a, there's like a fragile harmed coup part. Uh, and it's time now to call upon the spirits to help out and heal this part. And then it's like, oh, you want me? <laughs> and here comes. Yeah. You, anytime you make the choice towards love, you're in alignment with divinity. Because that's all divinity. Divinity just sit, hovers around the planet and waits, waits to help with the love. Mm. That's mm. all it does. Right. No. So even the call for help. help, call for help, like I'm, I'm injured, I need healing. Here comes then the love to come down and bring our higher to selves into being. Okay, tell me a little bit about Ho'oponopono. Well, Ho'oponopono is a is a, a it's a practice that that can be done as a meditation. I teach it a, as a meditation. It was originally a family practice. It originally was mm. a group practice that so when when there was a, a a conflict or a problem in the family, there was a a, a systematized practice that the that the Hawaiian families would mm. do. The idea is, is that that we're removing, we are forgiving this entirely. We are getting to the other side of this so it can be uh, over with. So it can be okay, severed, cut, cut and done, you know, so that we are not holding on to this, you know. Mm -hmm. To hold a grudge in old Hawaii was considered, you know, one of the worst things that you could do, you know. Mm. You're, supposed to, you're supposed to let it go. So sorry. Um, so you, you, you're supposed to let it go. So, uh, so Ho'oponopono, um, oh, I'm sorry, there you go. So Ho'oponopono is, um, uh, is about, if, 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 just to translate the word, Ho'o is to make or mm -hmm. causative, and Pono, which we know from the seventh principle, is about rightness, about truth. Mm, to so, make right. Mm -hmm. To make right. But it's, it's doubled, Ho'oponopono. So it's to make right more right. Mm, right with okay. yourself, right with God. You know, and and so uh, so that and the process is is one of of uh, and I go through all the the, the entire process of the, of the book in the book of extending love to yourself. And there's the meditative version of Ho'oponopono, and then there's sort of the life version, which is that you are in a constant rapport with the idea that you are extending love to yourself all the time. Mm. You know, there's a phrase in Hawaiian. Uh, 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 or, or a, um, uh, a a spiritual adage in Hawaiian. I won't give you the Hawaiian, but it says to love yourself as you love God. Mm -hmm. And it, and how do we love God? If we love God, that means that we worship God. And if we worship God, what if that's what we're supposed to do for ourselves? Mm -hmm. And what if we do that? When we do that, that we align with, we are in sympathetic vibration with God. Mm -hmm. And maybe mm. that's what we're supposed to do. And that's not egotistical. That's just to recognize what's always there. Mm. So when you're saying the different things is I love you. So you're saying I love you. And you're saying I love you. I love you. Great love God. You. This part of you that's this part of you that's hurt. This part of you yeah. that has, has has forgotten its divinity. I love you. And I love and, you. And, and you learned that you're something other than perfect from someone who didn't. Right, the coup. Who yeah, the part, the injured part of you, the coup that's injured you. And you yeah, that's say, the part that, that holds that that holds that that memorized pattern. So you say, "I'm in charge now," right? And you memorize this because someone else was in charge. Mm. But I'm in charge now, and I love you. Yeah, and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that you feel that way about yourself. I'm really so. I see this exactly as it is, and I'm sorry that you do have that low self esteem. And please forgive me for all the times in which. I let you have that low self-esteem and I agreed with it. Mm. And I invited people in who allow, who reflected back that low self-esteem. And I'm going to take better care of you now. So please forgive me for all the times when I did not attend to this problem. Mm. And then thank you. And thank you is, thank you for going along with this new way of being. You're fine. We're fine. And you mm. need to let this go. You need to let this go now and and thank you for letting this go now, because if you follow m the conscious mind where we're going, who and I'm following my inspiration, we're going to get to Hawaii. Right. Lovely. So the meditation, I assume, is kind of is it like repeating, you know, going to yeah. the injured part of yourself and saying, I love you. I'm so yeah. sorry. Right. I'm yeah. here for you. Please forgive me. Thank you. And, and I assume in a family practice, it could be, you know, I yelled at my husband. 
So, or I'm mad at my husband, my kid, my aunt, my uncle, whomever, and you say, I love you. I'm sorry that I've harmed you. I please forgive me. Thank you. So is that the meditative practice? Yeah, that's it. And you know, the four phrases really, really came about, um, uh, really came out by uh, um, uh, a, a Hawaiian teacher uh, that I like. What they weren't part of the original practice, but I think that they encapsulate something. They're saying we got to bring love to the situation. We have to bring a recognition of the problem to the situation. We have to bring forgiveness and making amends mm -hmm. to the situation. And we have to bring gratitude for everyone agreeing to this, to the situation. Mm. I think that that's what the, so those four phrases, they, they came about in order to universalize something, you know, but, but um, uh, there's so many different versions of Ho'oponopono, uh, different family traditions of it. Um, it's been likened to, uh, ritualistic fasting. It's been likened to exorcism. You know, Ho'oponopono also means kind of clean it up. So you can Ho'oponopono the yard. You know? Oh, wow. Wow. Well, so it has like a, it's, it's a generalized yeah, term so, now. Yeah. In, in Hawaii but, it is, or you're just saying just generally? It, it, it just, just generally, you know, so the one, the one that I share is the one that, that, uh, that was taught to me and that makes the most sense to me, but there are, there are a whole bunch of different versions of it. But if you just think of uh, that that the raw material of this love, recognition, forgiveness, making amends, and gratitude are all necessary things in order to uh, to change a limiting belief. That's really what it's about. And so, when you have clients, I, I just read a book. It was. Um just recently and it was all about a guy who just says i love you i love you like he says looks in the mirror and says i love you i love you every single day to himself and he talks about the transformative power of doing that so i'm thinking the the equivalent of ho'oponopono is in some ways even more cherished i think to just say to yourself you know i love you and i'm sorry that i've forgotten that you are that I've, I've forgotten that th what the truth is of the matter. Um, one, of the, one, of the healers on, one of the healers on Maui who identifies as Mu, as a descendant of the Mu people, he talks about aloha ma. And aloha ma means self-reflective love. And that self-reflective love is the ideal. That's mm. the end game. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. So what if, what kinds of things have you just seen as uh, as someone who's a shaman doing these shamanic practices what have you seen as the transformative power of just doing these practices the whole ponopono one which it seems to me is just hugely well it, it, it opens you to uh it opens you to the idea that there are different parts of yourself it also mm -hmm. opens you to the idea that to watch your thoughts is to disidentify from the ones you don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I just watched uh, something, uh, uh, an interview with Eckhart Tolle, and, and and he was asked the question, "What do I do about my What do I do about my toxic thoughts?" And he said, "Well, you're doing a whole lot asking that question because the fact that you're asking that question means that you're already separate mm. enough from the toxic thought to ask the question." Mm. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you're already and and the, when we run into problems is when we're so identified with it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why the recognition piece is so important. What's so important in healing is a sense of this is real. I'm actually feeling this. This mm -hmm. actually happened to me. You know, people will will come in and they've been they've had neglect or they've had abuse or whatever, and they'll say and they'll say, but I understand why they did that, and they will have a whole psychological profile of their abuser mm. because they're so empathetic that they understand why, but they haven't actually dealt with, all right, but this happened. Mm. And that, and that recognition is so important that we, uh, that we make for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, it pulls us away from something that, that is actually hurting and that needs attention and the right. inner child, so to speak, they don't care about a psychological profile of why they were treated that way. Right, it's still the back there. It's, it's lost soul part is still back there someplace. And it's like, great, I'm glad that you figured this out with your mind. 
with your kid, I can't remember what it's called, your conscious mind, your Lono, yeah. but yeah. like help that poor child who you right. left behind. That's right. oh, just so interesting. It's so rich. Um, we've been talking to Jonathan Hammond about his book, The Shaman's Mind, in which he, um, we've done just a very, very, very precursory look at a lot of different things in your book, the main parts of your book and, and included in your book are all these beautiful practices that that relate to every single thing that we've talked about today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Mahalo. So wonderful to Mahalo. be here. Thank you.